I got a few comments asking me about my VS Code setup. I agree, it looks very nice, and I'm gonna show off how to, uh, well, make it look like that. First of all, Eva theme. So you install it, and then I think theme, uh, yeah, color theme, and I use Eva dark. That's that for that. Uh, and then for the icons that you currently see, it's also an extension called Material Icons. Boom, you install it, nothing needs to be done, unless um, icons theme, yeah, file icon theme, and then you pick material icon theme. That's almost it, however, the Eva theme doesn't color code as you currently see it. I, ch I changed a bunch of stuff. And I actually teach how to do that in my video that you're gonna see right now. Aside from that, it's a bunch of numerous different settings that make things look differently. You could just copy my settings.json. I leave a link to all of my dot files in the description. You'll see it. However, just taking it all and copying it and pasting it sounds to me like a horrible idea uh, because you'd be changing a bunch of stuff that you're not sure do what. So I'll try to show off a couple of things that matter most. Well, first of all, uh, editor token color customizations, essentially me uh, changing colors of stuff that I want to look differently. Uh, if you watch the video that was linked a couple of seconds prior, you know how to do this. Uh, but every other setting is kind of difficult to understand just from reading it, at least sometimes. So, a few things. First of all, tabs. If I'm pinning something, I probably already know what it is, by memory, I guess, since I always keep them there. So I picked compact in pinned tab sizing to make them this squarey little things. Then I have wrap tabs. What is that? Let's try opening a bunch of files. Uh, so this one, actually, will have an easier time just opening a bunch of my libraries. So here I go, opening more and more. And as we get to the side, they wrap. The default behavior is that they go on and on and on to the right. And you have this horizontal scroll bar uh, to scroll. And I find that just fucking horrible, really uncomfortable to deal with. However, if you all if you have all of your files wrapped like this, uh, you can just click on one if you want to. Or what is this? So you press con uh, Control P by default, and then EDT, and you have a quick open of all of the files that you currently have open. If you're the type that to who it's easier to type than to use the mouse, you will probably use this. But I use the hotkey. I didn't make it with auto hotkey, now it's just a built in VS Code command. Uh, it's gonna be easier to locate it like this. So, yeah. Wait, no, that's not it. <laughs> uh, this one yeah so show all editors by appearance uh, there are a couple of different filtering options but that's the idea you can just do make a hotkey press it and then type in like oh I want to be there boom instead of clicking on it still use my mouse even though I use vim but I don't always want to depending on how I sit. 
like a crab or like a crab. Nevertheless, let's move on to the next thing. By default, the top of your VS Code will look something like this. I'm never going to use any of these with my mouse, so I remove it. This is also, all of this is accessible with my keyboard, so I remove it as well. Uh, and so is this, so I remove it. Much cleaner now. It might work better for you than it does for me, so don't just trust me and remove them as well, but know that those are options. Now, my sidebar is on the right. The reason for that, let's open, um, I guess it wouldn't get to there. Essentially, the idea is, uh, so the settings you want to change is sidebar location. Now it's on the right, let's move it to left to see why it actually matters. As I do this, my code jumps. And it might not seem like a big deal. Say you go to extensions and you, and you do your thing, you're not really focusing on the code. Still, it's kind of annoying to see the code jump. However, if you move it, move it to the right, the code stays in the same place, roughly. This will still change a bit, but still, it's far nicer because it stays in one place. Now I understand that having it on the right feels kind of weird, and it did for me too, but I got used to it and I like it quite a bit more. Now there's a setting that I just found. So I had this. Remember the menu bar that we ha uh, hidden? Hoed? Wait, what's the hidden? Hayden, hood, what? I completely don't remember that word in past tense. Well, nevertheless, we hoed it, sure. Uh, and for me, it was compact being here. However, you can even hide it. And it's not even existent. I personally don't need it. So hidden is the best one for me. You can use compact which is what I used before, to be able to access it from here. Let's look at different things. Uh, toggle. Uh-huh. Oh, so essentially when you press Alt and then say E, that would uh, open the edit window. I personally hate when Alt does things which are not my hotkeys, so I don't like that. Invisible, yeah, makes it visible. Classic is, I guess, visible as well. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it at hidden. Now let's get to the minimap because it's not quite the default. I changed like almost every setting for the minimap, so we'll go through each one of them. So first of all, auto hide, a setting that I turned on recently and I quite like it. So essentially what this does it only appears the minimap once I uh, move my cursor onto it. I don't generally look at the minimap to see where I am. I look at the actual code. However, I do see this being a negative depending on how much you look at the minimap. So decide for yourself. Now you can see that it looks kind of blocky. You don't see actual characters on it is just blocks. Well, this is minimap render characters setting. So by default, it's on, meaning you see the actual characters and is really difficult to look at, in my opinion. Uh, it's kind of hard to understand what's what and not quite useful. But if you disable it, well, now is just how the code looks in terms of colors and shape which I find far more readable. Now scale, by default it's one, and uh, I am really not sure how I'm supposed to make use of this. I can't see shit, and I wear glasses. 
but if you have two that's much much better i've tried three not sure if i like it still it's a bit too much especially considering that i don't look at the minimap that often however three might work for some people uh okay so considering that you can just press the minimap to jump to it we'll get to that setting by the way uh, and to scroll you don't need the cursor on the right you can actually disable it before i forget and turn into <laughs> another tutorial channel that says we'll get to it and never does that's the setting uh, if you have it disabled then when you press on the minimap you'll jump to that position rather than uh, scrolling by page when you click scrolling by page is the default behavior and I think it makes no sense to have it like that so disable that now once again if you have the minimap and you I think you just should you won't need the vertical uh, scroll bar so you can just scroll ver vertical hidden and that's it there is also a setting to change the width of the vertical scroll bar before I knew about this setting I just set it to zero and that worked I know some very genius I could say people that made their own CSS to change this behavior even though there's qu quite literally a setting for this which is kind of hilarious there's something that I feel like I need to show off to you is a sticky scroll so you have your JSON or almost any language and as you scroll for example you're here and you want to see the name of the object or the name of the symbol you're currently in instead of having to scroll upwards until you actually reach the symbol name you don't have to because with sticky scroll you just have it here it's really nice and it really shines when you're working with classes for example so here I am writing some code for example Six, for example way too much and for some reason I need to I need the name of my class well it's just here I don't need to scroll back and then to where I was no need for that however I find that it's a bit annoying to have always I would much rather have it when I actually need it so toggle sticky sticky scroll it's actually a command that you can call and you can provide a hotkey to it to only appear it when you want it to I made a vim hotkey for exactly that where is it yep it's here so I made a hotkey from NeoVim and in case you want to learn about how to use NeoVim in VS Code I have a video on that and the final tip that I can think of right now is workspaces usually in VS Code you open a folder and here it is that's all that you can access however I want to work with multiple folders at the same time in one window I can achieve that with workspaces so I just open VS Code I guess and then do uh, add folder to workspace uh, and then you can add your folder whatever it is boom it appears in this kind of thing and you can have as many as you want I think I mean I haven't added 50 before maybe <laughs> that's the limit but probably not so I have a bunch of folders that are treated as if they are project folders so you get all the benefits from that like get statuses for example uh, yet I have all of them so when I do control P to find and open some file 
I can search through a lot of different things. <laughs> what if I? <laughs> nah, not gonna do that. <laughs> so, it's very nice. Instead of always having to open another folder and another, and then you end up having uh, a bunch of VS Code windows, or have to reload the window to open a different folder, all that, blah, you don't have to do that. Simply have a workspace uh, and that's it. I think I save it somewhere. I save it somewhere. Yeah, you can save your workspace as a file uh, and it will contain all the folders that you added to it. Um, and there are workspace settings as well. So you can have multiple workspaces as files. You just double tap. Well, let me show you. You can just double click this file, which is a saved workspace to open that. And you can have different settings for different workspaces. So that is definitely powerful rather than just having folders and folder settings exists very much so, but I can immediately see that being quite a bit more annoying to deal with. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, definitely subscribe so you don't miss any more VS Code content and stuff like that. Leave a comment in case I missed something. I might make another video on essentially settings you should change in VS Code and what I set up for my setup, if that's how you can say it. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, that's good. That's very good. Watch my other videos. I hope you like them as well. Goodbye.